song we're trying to You know, and we need him. 
like never before. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, if I
you be where he is. Yeah, yeah. That you be in his presence. Yeah. That you bask in his glory. Because yeah. there's so much he wants to share with you. There's so much he wants to impart into you. Yeah. Yeah. And the only way you can do that is in his presence. Yeah. That's the only way you can become that vessel of honor is in his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I'm desperate for him this morning. I can't live without him. I can live without a, a lot of this other stuff. But I can't live without him. Can't breathe without him. Can't move without him. Can't exist without him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First of all, I'd like to thank my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, for being able to stand before you this morning. To be able to break the bread of life. Um, I praise God for Pastor Thomas this morning. You know, it's a blessing. It's been a blessing to sit here with you and sit under you for this amount of time. It's a blessing because you have a heart for the people. You have a love for the people. You know how to reach people where they are. And, and that's a blessing. That's a blessing from God. I praise God for my husband. Hallelujah. I thank him for being a man of God. Um, a man that knows God, a man that loves God, a man that seeks God. And it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. My children, thank you for helping me out. There's a few of them that's here. Of my crew. But I praise God for them. For them. I'm going to go to the word of the Lord and let us go to the book of Jonah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the word of the Lord is, is amazing. You know you, every time you read it you get something different. You know you just go over and you know, God just expounds. And, you know, it expands and it's revelatory and God just has a way of using his word to relate to us. So we're going to Jonah 1. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is everybody there? Coming from the NIV. The word of the Lord is saying, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell asleep, deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us who is responsible for making all of this trouble for us. What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? 
from what people are you? They had questions. He answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that this is my fault, that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to the land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for, for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you please. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Now, the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for this day. And we thank you for the ability to come forth in your word. We thank you for the ability to be here. You've given us strength to be able to press, as our sister said this morning. You've given us strength to be able to come into your presence this morning. We just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for all those that are here right now that have a need for a word. And we thank you right now that your word shall not return void, but it will accomplish that which you sent for. And we give you the glory this morning. Lord, I decrease, you increase, you have your way. You use these lips of clay, God, you use them to speak what you would have said today. Let your glory be revealed. Let the fruit come forth and be manifest from this word. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And uh, my subject today is simple obedience. Simple obedience. Now, obedience is a word that a lot of people don't like. It, it may sound a little harsh because people really don't like to obey. Um, obedience, the meaning of it is compliance with an order, request, or law, or submission to another's authority. And you know, as we, we live in a society where there's no respect, for authority, there's rebellion and disobedience running rapid. Um, people worshiping other gods, doing their own thing, you know, and the flesh is just cutting up. That's what it does. Nothing good in it. Young and old are turning away from that faith. People are hearing and not doing. When my children were younger, I created a chore chart. Okay? Y'all know what that is. If you got as many as I got, they need to be doing something. <laughs> so I created a chore chart. I explained to them that they had a responsibility to complete the task for that day there would be some type of reward, an allowance or a treat at the end of the week if they, you know, did what they were supposed to do. You know, they got a mark for the day that they complete, you know, their task. So, if one was supposed to wash the dishes that particular day, but they decided to vacuum the living room, they didn't follow instructions. Okay, even though it was appreciated, 
that they vacuumed the floor. They still was out of order. They were still being disobedient because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So that affected the person who was supposed to vacuum the living room. Because they're standing here like, well, it was on the, on the chart that I was supposed to vacuum the living room. So it was up to the one who was initially supposed to vacuum where they, whether they should wash the dishes or do nothing. Disobedience causes turbulence, indecisiveness, and confusion. Because you're standing there looking at them like, okay, I was supposed to wash the dishes, or I was supposed to vacuum the floor, but you took my spot. So what am I supposed to do? Now I'm in trouble. I got to suffer, because I don't get my mark for the day. You know? So Jonah, who was a prophet of God, who God had chosen to complete a task, Jonah, being a prophet, because prophets got to do some things that people don't really want them to do. They got to say things that people don't want them to say. They got to expound on things and release things that people are not going to be fond of. That's just part of being a prophet. But he was one of God's prophets. He decided to go the opposite direction than what God had told him to. He went to Tarshish, then Joppa, <coughs> where he spent money to get on a ship. Disobedience will cost you something. He had to pay money to get on a ship where he wasn't even supposed to be on. So he lost some money. Once he got on the ship, a great storm rose up to the point where the ship almost broke into pieces. The sailors began to cry out to their God and started throwing all the stuff off the boat overboard. I'm sure they were looking to trade or, you know, back in those days people were sailing. When they were sailors, they had commerce. They had, you know, intentions of trading, buying, whatever they needed to do. But here's this man on the ship that's throwing everything off. So they cried out to their God, threw off the stuff off the boat, off board, and they weren't expecting all of this crazy stuff. They told Jonah, as he was sleeping heavily, that he needed to get up and cry out to his God. I mean, we cried out to our God, you need to cry out to, to your God. <laughs> and apparently they didn't have any response from their God. So, they had questions and concerns. They were trying to figure out why this was happening. They began to understand that it was because of him that they were going through and they needed to do something. He told them to throw him overboard, but they were afraid. His decision to run away from God affected others. It caused chaos in their lives. It caused a storm to come in their lives. And they don't even know what's going on. Because of one man's wrong decision. Others are, wait, are waiting on you to obey God. Fully. They need what you have. But sometimes we let circumstances circumstances and situations throw us off course. When somebody's waiting for you, you have the answer. You have what they need. In his running away from God, he ran right into him. Because he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. We have to examine and see what's causing turmoil in our lives and throw it overboard. 
If it's past hurts, if it's disappointments, it's, if it's lying, cheating, drinking, smoking, drugs, depression, oppression, toxic relationships, whatever, it needs to be tossed overboard. Yeah, yeah. Because it's causing turbulence. Yeah, right, right. So we got to examine that. Even though we don't want to, and I'm used to this, and I'm satisfied right here in the turbulence. We gotta throw those things overboard. I know this is a word that it's kind of sharp, but God is trying to get us in alignment because we have some souls that's out there in the world, and they need us. So we throw these things overboard. Whatever is about to destroy this ship, point to yourself, this ship. Whatever is about to try to destroy this ship, I need to throw it overboard. I need to get rid of it. It's not worth it. I'm stuck. I have nowhere to go. I have nothing to do. I, I don't need this in my life. It's leeching off of me. It's draining me. So Jonah 2 and 1 says, from the inside of the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. Meaning, Jonah was at, was at his lowest point. Where else could he go? He was in the belly of a fish in the bottom of the sea. Where could he go? What could he do? He, he couldn't make the, the fish spit him up. But he had to submit to God. While he was in there, he had to pray and repent to God wholeheartedly because he knew he would have been just dinner and that's it. It's important to just obey. Just obey. Simple obedience. We know the flesh and the spirit is at war. We know that. But the closer we get to him, the more he pulls us into him, into his bosom. We should be able to obey what he's telling us. He was at his lowest point. And he had a repentant heart. And then at the bottom of that, it says in 2 and 10, it said, And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. The scriptures say, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you rebel and resist, you'll be devoured by the sword. So you have to be obedient. And willing must be a part of it. There's a difference in just being obedient and being willing and obedient. I can refer back to my children again. So I can say, there's a piece of paper on the floor. You're going to pick it up? Pick it up. Well, they can walk over and pick up the paper immediately without lips poked out, without stomping, and be willing. And that's a blessing. But if they got, well, she walked past it. Why she can't pick it up? Looking at somebody else. When I said to you to pick it up, but you're looking at somebody else. But I wasn't talking to them. I was talking to you. 
But you got to keep going and going and going and going. And I told you to pick it up. But you pick it up. That's obedient. But you wasn't willing. Because you had a whole lot of stuff. You had to go around like Jonah did. You got to go to Tarshish. You got to go to Joppa. You got to get on the boat. You got to pay some money. You got to do all that to get to where you're supposed to be. <laughs> but then the Lord, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. You know, he's a God of second chances. Regardless. And, and when you look back at when he was on the ship, when he was on the ship, the men told him to pray to his God. But yet, after he prayed to his God and everything stopped and he threw him over, they began to believe in his God. So God was turning some stuff around even in that. <laughs> even in disobedience, he was working some things out. He said a second time to Jonah, go to that great city of Nineveh, proclaim to it the message I gave you. <coughs> Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. So here it is, six days that you've already kind of wasted because you was in the belly for three days and three nights. Now you got to go through all the way to the city for three days. So you wasted some time. It's all right. Long as you get back on track. All right. Get back on track. Don't let it throw you off. Just get back on track. That's all. So the, Ninev the Ninevites believed God. Because he said 40 days, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevite, Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth. They listened. They heard the word of the Lord. We don't need to worry about whether it's going to be received or not. When he tells you to do something. When he gives you instructions. When he gives you a word to impart, to give to someone, to do something. We don't need to worry about who, who's going to receive it. We don't need to worry about who's going to like it, dislike it, love it, not love it. In obedience to God, we need to do it. So God, yeah, he turned that thing around. He gave him a second chance. After all the chaos, God's original intent was to save that city after a warning was sent if they would obey. So you see, Jonah had to obey. And then it caused obedience to come from others. Whether they received it or not, obedience begets obedience. Rebellion begets rebellion. So, he's a God of a second chance. He gave Jonah another chance. Because he did see his heart while he was in that belly. He saw his heart. And he probably, I mean, I, I don't know why he ran. Because you can't run from God. I mean, he's everywhere. But sometimes we have to do some things that don't, don't look right. Or don't sound right like in order to get God's work done. Some things might look crazy to some people, but He's the God of the second chance. And in some cases, some of our cases, third, fourth, fifth, fortieth, thirty, thirty-five, ninety-two, 
Cause some of us been hard headed. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We ain't dotted every eye and crossed every T. Lord knows I don't want to go over there and do that. Uh uh. No. Uh uh. That ain't me to do. And flesh talking the whole time. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And God saying, okay, I'll find somebody else. Miss your son. So, what has God spoken to you personally to do? Has he told you to bless someone or a brother in need? Has he told you to speak a word of encouragement to someone in the marketplace or someone on the street? Has he told you to pray for a homeless person? Or go pray for somebody in a hospital? Or buy someone a hot meal that hasn't eaten? Sometimes doing what he told us to do doesn't look right or feel right or receive right, but best believe it's for your good. It's for your good. There's an inheritance waiting for you. And it's time to get in position. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And it's not only those commandments that's written, but those that he tells you personally. Those are his commandments as well. Keep his commandments. And you will flourish. You will flourish in the things of God. I was looking at that inheritance. You know, he has an inheritance for us. And it took me back to a movie. And I know y'all remember this movie. Brewster's Millions. Richard Pryor. He was so else. But you know, there's some things that he desired in his heart in that movie, but he didn't see a way of doing it. He wanted that, that team, that baseball team. And then he received an inheritance from a relative, but there were stipulations. There were some things that he had to do. He was given a lot of money, but he had to release that money in order to get the bigger yes. inheritance. Yes. The millions. And he had to spend up that money in a certain amount of time. Right. He had to spend all that money. His friends didn't understand because they would be right steady. Oh, well, we, we, we did this with this money and now you got some more money coming in. And it's coming in and it's like, I can't tell them what I'm doing, but I got to get rid of this money in order to get the bigger thing. And then there was even some people back there scheming to try to trip him up so he won't spend money to get the bigger. There's always going to be somebody to try to trip you up out, out of your inheritance. There's always going to be something to try to block you from getting what God has for you. There's always going to be distractions to get, to stop you from getting to the bigger picture, from seeing the bigger picture that God has back there. And you see the picture, but you got to go through all this stuff. You got to press, like sister said, you got to press to try to get to it. Don't let anything block you from getting to your inheritance. Just be obedient. Everything he tells you to do, believe me, it will fall in line if you obey him. He will block everybody. He will come through just like a linebacker. Because they're coming from north, south, east, and west to get you. But he's going to block them. 
because you're doing what he told you to do. Simple obedience. Don't let the enemy rob you of your inheritance. Don't let him get it. Whatever you got to release, if you got to spend that money, if you got to release stuff, you got to throw stuff overboard to get to your inheritance. All right, all right. Do it. Do it. Do it. Like Nike said, just do it. Just do it. He loves you. And he's got a purpose and a plan for everybody in this place. Even people out there that don't look like they have a purpose. They got one. Because they exist. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. He's able. He's able. You can stand up on your feet. Simple obedience. Simple obedience. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and worship him. Come on and praise him right now. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy though. He's worthy. He's worthy. Is there something that's blocking you? Is there something that's keeping you from obeying God? Tell me. Is there something keeping you from obeying God? Totally. You might say, oh, it's, it's not that, and you know, I have to do this. I have to suffer through this. No. Don't believe what the enemy is saying. Yeah. Some things you don't have to suffer through. That's right. You don't have to. God takes us through things sometimes, and we know it's him, but we know it's working a far more exceeding yeah. Yeah. way of glory in the end of this. But sometimes the enemy throw things at you and you know he's always trying to mimic God and make it look like it's God but some things ain't God. It's the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's somebody struggling with something. Any addictions. Any addictions. Mm. Doesn't matter the type of addiction. Any addiction today. If so, you're welcome to come to this altar. And the ministers, the deacons, whoever will pray with you. He's here. He's here. Don't let anything rob you. Don't let your flesh rob you. Don't let a significant other rob you that you're not married to. You just tangled up with. Toxic. You feel like you can't do without them. But they're not doing anything to help you come up. They're not pushing you to God. They're pulling you from God. It's real, guys. It's real. This is real. It's, you know, it's hard to address things sometimes. Because, you know, even back in the day, there were secrets. Secrets, 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 secrets. And you feel like you don't need to touch on stuff. There's secrets. But secrets hurt. Secrets hurt people sometimes. People go to the grave sometimes with stuff. 
and you don't find out until it's time for them to be buried. Or time after that. Oh, you got a son. Oh, you got a daughter. I didn't know that. You know, yes, a lot of shame. There was a lot of hurt. There was a lot of shh. Don't tell nobody. Because if you tell somebody, they might leave. He might leave me. She might leave me. I'm touching somewhere. But God is able. He's able to heal that hurt. From no secrets. Just give it to him. Toss it overboard. Toss it. You're hanging on to some resentment. Why did that happen to me? Why did that have to happen to me? This is real. And it's time to just come before the Lord with no fig leaves. If you desire prayer, you come forth. Hallelujah. If you don't know the Lord, it's time to know Him. We're almost in the last leg <laughs> of this thing. We get close to it. You know, people always say, oh, Jesus is coming soon. Hey, <laughs> he's coming soon. Sooner than what you think. Sooner than soon. I used to hear that when I was a child. It still, it still wasn't a lie. <laughs> it is soon. So if you don't, need, don't know Jesus in the part of your sin, you can come forth. If not, we're just going to pray right here. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for your word. Amen. We thank you for the increase of your word. Yes. We thank you for the birthing of what you're about to do in this place. Yes. How you're about to bring forth gifts, talents, your glory shall be revealed even the more in this place because it has been open unto you, God. We have people here that are expecting more of you, not of us, but of you. And God, we just believe that your word will bring forth much fruit. Much fruit. Lord, thank you for every house represented in this place. You know what kind of turbulence might be going on in their home. You know what kind of turbulence might be going on with their families, on their jobs. God, whatever it is, we toss it overboard. We don't hold on to that any longer. We release everything to you because we trust you. And we believe you. And we bless your holy name. It's by no other name that man can be saved. No other name can bring healing. No other name can bring salvation and deliverance. God, thank you. Thank you for coming to see us and see about us. Thank you for dwelling in us. God, we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. With hands lifted up, we give you glory. We just thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Even when we were at our lowest point, and there was nowhere to go. We thank you for hearing our prayer. 
And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.